going beyond the headlines. Asking the questions you want answered. Exploring government policies and how they impact you. We are delving deeper. Good evening and welcome to Delving Deeper. I'm your host, Sonolala. Joining us this evening is the Chief Executive Officer of the National Entrepreneurship Development Company Limited, better known as Netco. With us today is Mr. Calvin Maurice. Good evening, Mr. Maurice, and welcome back. Thank you for having me again, Sunil. I'm come, becoming a regular. <laughs> <laughs> a pleasure to have you back. You know, Netco um, is geared towards developing and fostering uh, the entrepreneurship, the entrepreneurs in this country, and um, have been doing well so far. Uh, especially since the pandemic, we've seen many uh, entrepreneurs popping up since that pandemic. Correct. Yes, you're very correct. Um, I want to start off with, you know, Netco recently would have launched a project implementation unit, as well as a training and business advisory center. Tell us more about this. So Netco is uh, implementing a number of projects on behalf of the Ministry of Youth Development of a National Service. So as a result, uh, we developed or we started the project implementation unit. So that particular unit would take full responsibility for those PSIP projects, some of which the Youth Entrepreneurial Hub, the Business Accelerator Program, to name a few. The training uh, division, which is outside of the PSIP program, is really core NETCO. But over the years, particularly after COVID, there has been a significant increase in the need for training. So I would say it tripled. The need for training tripled. Also, we have the business advisory unit in that division, that area as well. So because of that increase, we uh, decided that Netco's space, current space at corporate office, was a bit too small, and now we, uh, we moved across to, to that um, particular facility. The thing about it is that facility is very high-tech, Sunil. It's, it's one of a very modern facility. We have also um, constructed a green room so we can do our own videos. Just as, you know, you, you're not you alone, Sunil, <laughs> that we can do our own videos and stuff. So we also can do our training, our training, online training, our um, various forms of social media advertising and all that. As you talk about, um, you know, entrepreneurs, it's a notion, an idea that, you know, entrepreneurs are the backbone of the economy. And as you said, you know, it's triple the amount that we're seeing in terms of people moving towards that training and, have, and, and actually wanting that training. Uh, as we talk about training, though, Netco continues to provide that online training so far. Have you seen an uptick in people wanting that online training or do people want that on-hand experience um, physically? So yes and no. So of course, during the COVID period, there was significant increase in terms of online training, um, thousands. It dropped since, but because now we have the uh, MSB grant program and part of that program mandatory is online training such as the um, training to develop their business plan or the business coaching as well. All that is done virtually online. So you have a greater impact on online training through that specific program less in terms of the core program, but more or less because, because and it, it doubles back to the reason we have the training facility where it's more in-person. So therefore, more in-person, less online in, in terms of core net core, but in terms of the business accelerate, the, the business um, MSB grant, it's totally online. So the target, as you know, is about 2,000 persons. So therefore, to date, we have trained just about close to 400 persons online through the online training um, media. 
I know you all have a mentorship program where you mentor, um, you know, certain entrepreneurs before they implement those business plans and so on. How has that been going? Oh, great. Uh, so the mentorship program, again, is also not in only in our core uh, support service, but also in under the Business Accelerator program and again under the MSB grant program. And that has been rather successful. And we've seen many of our entrepreneurs moving into other areas and making a name for themselves, winning prizes. Um, you also have a business pitch element as well to uh, encourage and to support entrepreneurs and to develop them, to um, pitch their business ideas. So that has been going quite well, Sunil. As we talk about entrepreneurship, you know, um, we talk about the uptick in terms of the amount of entrepreneurs the country has. But are you seeing a specific target in terms of put in entrepreneurs going towards a, a certain industry? Well, it's mixed. Uh, you find a number of entrepreneurs now going into like light manufacturing in terms of agro-processing. That's an area that you find a number of them moving into. Yes, so in terms of light manufacturing, agro-processing, that's number one. Uh, but entrepreneurs get into retail. A number of them get into retail, and that's the top of the list. Uh, based on Netco's mandate, as we look at the whole topic now is Forex, right? <laughs> having persons get into the manufacturing, having persons export um, their products, whether services or manufactured products. Um, Netco is keeping that as a clear mandate and developing programs and um, lending products to support that area of our national development, our economic development. So in the last year, we have seen a movement for, for the number of entrepreneurs who were um, who are doing manufacturing, you have more persons being involved in that and coming to Netco for support, one way or the other, whether training or uh, requesting a loan from Netco. So um, at the end of the day, we see that we are certainly developing entrepreneurs to have that shift, that economic shift that the government is looking forward to. As you talk about Forex, you know, uh, there's all this talk about this Forex issue that's been lingering right now, but do you teach entrepreneurs, just in case they don't have that access to Forex, to possibly use alternative methods in, in terms of getting that raw materials locally and, and so on? Well, the general idea is, Sunil, that uh, local manufacturers should, as much, should use as much local content as possible. And my, my, my pet project is cocoa, chocolate, all right? And that is a, a direct example of local content in terms of uh, light of manufacturing, where the material is local, the labor totally local, and provides uh, economic development in communities. Because um, if you have a cocoa um, estate, you will hire uh, labor from within the community, if you produce in terms of various stages of cocoa production, you can use resources from within the community. So that's, I consider, one of the ideal um, areas in terms of manufacturing and production. But there's so many different areas. Um, the carnival industry to start with, that can absorb a number of entrepreneurs who into sewing, who into different um, areas. So therefore, um, this big festival we have can utilize local uh, much more, much more in terms of local content. I would have asked you uh, just now about, you know, entrepreneurs uh, going into certain industries and so on, but is there a particular niche that Netco would like to see uh, entrepreneurs go into in that industry? I would not specifically say niche. There has to be a mixed approach in terms of the uh, sector specific information, in terms of um, getting uh, entrepreneurs getting themselves in, involved in industry. Um, as I just mentioned, Carnival, which is so diverse, uh, you have 
a number of different innovative and other areas entrepreneurs could get into. Technology, to start with, and you'll, you have Ministry of Digital Transformation that uh, involved in terms of developing entrepreneurs to develop tech technology products on, in, in the area of technology. So it, it is diverse and it is important for us to also recognize the, the niches of particularly our young people uh, in terms of just saying, listen, we want persons developed in this particular area rather than allowing persons to expand their horizons in the area that they really like. And I'm glad you talked about young people, because that was my next question. The NETCO is uh, closely aligned. It's your ministry is the Ministry of Youth and Development and National Service. Correct, correct. How are you all helping young people or assisting young people of TNT? Oh, I mean, significantly. Uh, uh, most of our programs, not only it's targeted for the general population, those who want to get in entrepreneurship, but most of our programs very supportive. Uh, so if, for example, one of the programs on the PSIP, uh, the Youth Entrepreneurial Hub, is targeted to, is targeting the um, young persons between the ages of 18 to 35. And that's the target group within the Ministry of Youth Development and National Service. And it's, it's like a, a hub where entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs could come in, get information, get training, get development, um, see what opportunities, what businesses they can get involved with. So just as the, its name is a hub, um, it's encouraged for a comfort zone, uh, a, a space where entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs could come in and feel very free and comfortable to ask questions, to explore. Um, it's a lot of technology as well, because they could go online, get information, research, but, and our staff will be there. Our staff will be there also there to support them. So that's one of the projects that we've, we've, we consider um, that will be coming on board this year, 2024. And all the different grants and the opportunities. And let me talk about that. Let me, let me slow down and talk about that. So, I mean, the whole thing about, oh, Netco is given a grant and a grant. But you know, it's much more than that. Because getting a grant from Netco it's an opportunity for NETCO to further help you in getting an, a, a loan, okay? Uh, $20,000, okay, it's a lot, but it would not be sufficient to really explore your business idea. And NETCO can support entrepreneurs, those who are getting this grant, um, to build up, to scale up, and to also, um, further invest. So therefore, one of our particular uh, loan promotions we have now, it's the 50-50 the loan. I'm sure you've heard of it, Sunil. I invite you to come and take a loan if you have a business to start up, um, where you can invest uh, 25000 at UTC and get 25000 to do whatever, um, to assist with whatever business operation. So. Initiatives, initiatives like that, uh, collateral being an issue, young persons can um, get these type of loan facilities to get them started, get them going, and um, we sustain them with not only the fund, but only training, mentorship, business advisory. You talk about the 50-50 loan, and I know it's a $50,000 loan, but why this particular structure at this point in time? Because one of the major problems over the years, uh, entrepren entrepreneurs, especially young ones, will tell you that they have no collateral, okay? So that 50-50 loan, of course, as you say, is 25,000. They do not need to have collateral. The 25,000 that is invested is indeed part is the collateral, and it gives them an opportunity to build an investment, build savings. So therefore, at the end of the day, at some point in time, on completing the repayment of that loan, uh, they also have an investment. So therefore, they can again return to Netco using that as collateral and continue building their dreams. And, and, and that's it. Entrepreneurs, Sunil, 
they need to know, they need to understand uh, how important investment is. And this unique partnership between NEDCO and UTC is a significant one for not only young persons, because, I mean, elder folks as well sometimes do not understand the importance of investment. So anyone um, coming into this, this particular um, program, the, the, this loan um, program, will have an opportunity to build a savings and also build their business. Going back to youth, we had your line minister recently on the show, uh, Minister of Youth Development and National Service, Foster Cummings. He would have talked about, you know, youth in agriculture. Have you also seen, uh, you know, youth uh, coming into NETCO and hoping to grow a business in terms of the agricultural sector? Of course. And I also want to say that we support that project as well. We do all the entrepreneurial training for that particular project. That particular project. Um, and uh, so as I talked about agro-processing, it's a downstream um, area, business area, that uh, those persons who are involved in the agricultural project can come to NETCO and get further funding. And I've seen a number of them who are involved in the Youth in Agricultural Program um, providing and developing a number of unique agro-processed um, agro products. And as we talk about the Youth in Agriculture, is the 50-50 loan also available uh, to these youths if they want to get involved everyone in this? Everyone, uh, everyone, everyone, Sunil, everyone. I tell you, even you and all, if you want to come and get a loan, you're good. How is NETCO uh, contributing to the development and su success of MSMEs and MSCs and so on? Listen, NETCO is, like I was telling someone recently, you directly and indirectly. So we have our training programs, we have our advice, we have our mentorship. But we also support a number of NGOs, uh, a number of, um, like, Chamber of Industry and Commerce, some of their projects we uh, sponsor. So we support a number of uh, projects that will help the growth and development of the um, entrepreneurial ecosystem. Um, and hence the reason we are pleased when we see the success and the rise of entrepreneurship in Trinidad and Tobago. And one can, can really say in the next five to ten years, Trinidad and Tobago will totally transform in terms of uh, the level of the economy, uh, the level of employment that would be uh, available to citizens based on all these small businesses opening channel for the uh, employment of um, our citizens. Given your budgetary allocation for fiscal 2024-2025, um, what are some of the projects that NETCO is going to be undertaking? So we talk about the normal training and all that, but in terms of youth entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial hub, that's one. The business incubator program, the business accelerator program, sorry. Uh, and the business accelerator program is one of our programs where we specialize, we support entrepreneurs who have special needs in training. These uh, entrepreneurs will come from institutions, whether private or public. Uh, they'll be referred to NETCO through that pro in that program, and we'll provide training, but specialized training. So therefore, specialized, customized. So uh, you have an, a business idea, NETCO will look at the business idea, develop a plan to sustain that idea, and over a year or so, we would do the various training programs with them, individualized or uh, general. So at the end of the day, they, they have a target to meet in terms of their uh, training needs and the development needs in regards to business. Whether you need to register a business, whether you need to open a bank account based on the product development, if you need to uh, look at product development, we will hold and hold the entrepreneur right through. Uh, for example, and, and, and it, it speaks to the partnerships as well. So, for example, agro-processing. Uh, those persons who come in with a need to, to do agro-processing or to pro develop a product in that particular um, area of, of business, um, we have a partnership with Kariri. 
So therefore, we can uh, access that support in terms of product testing and provide that support to entrepreneurs. So that's the, the importance of the partnership we build for, the, for that the benefit of our um, clients and the entrepreneurs. Mr. Maurice, I understand that God's a very good track record in terms of the, uh, your clients actually paying back that loan. Can you talk to us about this? The credit risk facility at NETCO, the credit risk arrangement with NETCO, has been instituted since 19, 2019, sorry, 2019. And it worked well. It's, uh, it's allowed us to do a better risk assessment. Uh, we see it in the numbers in terms of loans going to default. It has significantly changed. Uh, less, less, less loans going to default. And, um, and when it do, Netco, though we recover, we understand the group of entrepreneurs that we are dealing with. So there's a lot of outreach. There's even further training. If we realize that an entrepreneur is slipping because of a shortcoming in terms of their business skills, we would um, further provide training and guidance and mentorship. Uh, so it's not just like recovery. It is also making sure that at the end of the our mandate is to ensure that these businesses are sustainable. So yes, we would have uh, default loans, but it has reduced significantly. And I would say no more average than the other financial institutions. NETCO would have recently held its um, annual award ceremony for entrepreneurs, um, following which Miss Dominic Tone uh, yes. would have been here as well. Yes. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting her, but yes. that's, not, that's not the question. <laughs> <laughs> the question is basically, the, what does NETCO see with regards to how important is this award ceremony to have on an annual basis to celebrate the entrepreneurs that we have developing in the country? Celebrating entrepreneurs is very important, Mr. Miller. It's very important. Um, you see the pride on, you know, in, on their faces. And um, we keep the award program at a very high standard. Yeah. And it, when they sit in the audience, you would see that they feel accomplished. You know? And anyone in terms of the various categories can apply and be a uh, success in terms of, the, of winning an award with NETCO in that regard. So I think it's our feature event annually, and entrepreneurs look forward to it, uh, to participate in the award. But I'm happy you talked about the last um, award program and Dominique Torn, because what we are looking at is adding all these elements. So that was culture, that was under culture. And uh, NETCO has been very traditional over the years. But now we are moving into these other areas where you will find that entrepreneurship is never talked about much. And we have, in this period here, we'll be further uh, looking at developing entrepreneurs in that particular area of culture. Why can't an artist be a business person? You know, why can't an artist uh, look at uh, how they can initiate uh, their projects that they can earn doing what they love. You know, again, carnival, again, exhibitions. And so NETCO is gonna be focusing on that in terms of the cultural industry and how we can support these entrepreneurs in the cultural industry. As I said earlier, you know, there's this notion that entrepreneurs are the backbone of the economy, especially Trinidad and Tobago. How, in your view, how important are entrepreneurs in this uh, Twin Island state? Oh, it's very. Uh, um, in this Twin Island state or over the world, or anywhere in the world, um, people uh, rarely underestimate the worth of entrepreneurs, uh, the value they bring to the villages, the communities. Um, so micro-entrepreneurs, and I will say micro-entrepreneurs uh, in particular, contribute significantly. The one and in two persons they employ, the parlor that they employ Miss Jane's son, and the, you know, um, 
So it brings in, in terms of the community development aspect of it, but also when you look at it from an overall uh, perspective, it brings generally uh, the whole economic um, uh, development of uh, Trinidad and Tobago. And as we talk about uh, you know, Trinidad and Tobago, that's an island state, Tobago, how much entrepreneurs are we seeing from Tobago? I know they're, going, they're getting a new airport very soon. Uh, they might be flocking to and from Trinidad and Tobago. But how many entrepreneurs have come to Netco uh, possibly for, within the past year? Yeah, well, Tobago, we have, well, you know, we have an office in Tobago, a branch in Tobago. And Tobago, I must admit, is not as fast in terms as Trinidad, because they're a smaller community. But we do have entrepreneurs who approach our Tobago office, and um, we are making some level of um, advance in that particular community. But you have to remember, Tobago is, there's, there's a cultural thing as well. Uh, we in Trinidad, we, we, we borrow a lot. And the, one of the things we found in Tobago uh, they're very cultural. So the susu and the community uh, arrangement in terms of lending and supporting and all that is different. So therefore, because of the culture in Tobago, one has to recognize and respect that. Uh, but our branch in Tobago has been making inroad in terms of supporting those entrepreneurs who wish to get their support in Tobago. Um, you know, we always talk about the ministries and sectors coming together. Is there a way for Netco to possibly work with the tourism sector? Uh, you know, uncle and auntie selling sugar cake in Tobago to possibly market them and ensure that when the tourists come in, uh, it's properly marketed and... We, we, as a matter of fact, I think under the BAP program, we've worked with um, one or two uh, associations that support the... Um, tourism sector. Um, one of them went to hotels. Um, the hotel, one of them dealt with hotels. Um, one of them dealt with bed, bed and breakfast, you know. Uh, so we do support those small entrepreneurs. And over the next year, again, we're going to be focusing on those micro loans. That's what you talk about, the nuts man and the sugar cake and those things. We are going to develop, develop more products that can support those micro-entrepreneurs. Just before we wrap up, we've talked about the successes. Tell us about some of the challenges faced by Netco. Though we, the training program is quite a successful one, I would hope that entrepreneurs would uh, really come in and get the support from Netco in regards to developing their business idea, in regards to understanding um, simple accounts in terms of for doing, to do their own um, accounting, you know, and that type of support that Netco can readily give. Business advisory is a, is a significant service at Netco, but I believe that it is underutilized where uh, our business advisor would look at whatever business situation, whatever problem you uh, that exists in the business and advise you how to really turn it around. So I would think that uh, the public should really access more of these services and also try to understand Netco's lending products so therefore they can come in and get that support from Netco. Mr. Maurice, your final thoughts and, you know, hypothetically, if you were filled in a room with, uh, let's say, a thousand entrepreneurs, what would be your message to them? Do not give up. Uh, starting a business, sustaining a business is not the easiest thing. Uh, start a business that you have a passion for. Start a business with the intent and the will that... Um, you will, you will succeed uh, in terms of the, the positive, uh, how positive that business and how positive you can be in terms of the development of that business. Um, giving up is always a problem. Uh, there, there are always hard days in um, managing a business, but you must sustain. 
you must work hard is not a, a, a ready fix, you know. And any entrepreneur getting into a business must bottle themselves for, for that long haul. Um, it's about time in Trinidad and Tobago. We think about intergenerational businesses uh, and thinking and be developing your children to take over as well. So it's a whole mindset, and I will hope that entrepreneurs um, develop the mindset for business and look not in the short term, but certainly the long term for, of their business. Well, do not give up. That's the words from Mr. Calvin Maurice, the Chief Executive Officer of the National Entrepreneurship Development Company Limited, Netco. Uh, Mr. Maurice, it was, a very, it was a pleasure to have you here. It's been a very informative session for especially entrepreneurs uh, that's been developing and, and making their mark in Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me again, Sunil. <laughs> Join us at the same time next week for another episode of Delving Deeper. I am Sunil Lala. On behalf of the entire group, have a great night. Thank you.